so our being is tied by three knots the knot of matter the knot of life and the knot of mind that is how it's described in one of the stories in the vedas and we read about this also in the previous canto uh, tied like on the altar as a sacrificial creature so we are tied like that we don't realize it the first prison house is the prison of matter and how does it tie us through inertia obscurity it will not allow we try to go within and it's like a dead resistance almost like something which just refuses to move so while of course we all know we have to go within but the first difficulty the first challenge is the knot of matter its denseness its obscurity its inertia so if we try to meditate for a long time there is a natural tendency to fall asleep though of course we come out very peaceful and <laughs> believe ah what a nice meditation but yoga is not wishful thinking or belief or some such passing experience but a real thing uh, it's it's nice meanwhile if we can have a good sleep nothing wrong with that but it doesn't allow to go inside and this is the experience that everyone who has ever tried going within is very familiar with then savitri surged out of her body's wall and stood a little span outside herself and looked into her subtle being's depths and in its heart as in a lotus bud divined her secret and mysterious soul so she sees that divines she knows that it is hidden in the heart by what kind of knowledge that's where she divines it it's not that she has seen it or identified with it and in the subtle being so shubhendra is making it very clear don't confuse soul with the pineal gland and things like that the common question if soul is in the heart if the heart dies you shoot in the heart the soul will die also these are silly questions but once there was a very nice answer given by a doctor when a uh, little child was taken up for a very complicated surgery because he had congenital heart disease and chances of survival was very poor so the child the surgeon asked are you having any fear you want to ask something now children don't have fears like that so he said no but i have one request what is the request my mom has told me that god is in the heart so please tell me what he looks like and what he is like <laughs> so now the surgeon is non plus but he says okay okay he is not much bothered it's okay that's simple enough so he goes and when he is operating things are going fine but suddenly there comes a moment of crisis and sure enough it's like they have lost him so the surgeon gets exasperated and is given up the case that you know he feels bad because it's the poor child has died on the table and then he remembers suddenly this question that the child had asked him find out you are going to open my heart where does god reside and it flashes in him like a flash like something like an electrifying something and he says what where is god and the next moment with this thought suddenly everything begins to start again now this was a miracle happening on the table and as he is turning away he is told little come back come back come back the heart is picked up and the operation is successful and much later he could tell this boy when he asked him he said i know where god is and how he looks like <laughs> and he says you can't see him with these eyes but you can feel his presence and i too felt his presence thanks to your reminder so this is uh, of course the mother would and shubhendra would tell us that you can also see but that is a different kind of sight but at least we can identify with it so she divines that here lies the soul at the dim portal of the inner life that bars out from our depths the body's mind and all that lives but by the body's breath she knocked and pressed against the ebony gate 
So she is now confronting this portal which she has to pass through, the wall of matter, right deep into the heart. So this of course is not the anatomical heart which is shifted to the left but in the center of the chest, anywhere. But I suspect, maybe I am, I mean I can't say with surety, that the reason why the heart has shifted into the left is because we have become a very left-centric civilization. In, in many animals, the heart is right in the center. It's not shifted. And I have often wondered at the logic of nature why the heart is shifted on the left. <laughs> the heart should be in the right place. It shouldn't be, a, or it should be in the center because it is the center. Electrically, it is the center. That's why in ECG we can do like that. Precisely because the heart is the neutral point. It's actually this, literally the center. If we spread the arms and the stand straight with the legs joined and you make a triangle, the heart is right there. But why is it that it's left shifted? So I feel that there will be a course correction with future humanity. <laughs> but that's a realm of speculation. So Savitri stands and at the portal and presses. The living portal groaned with sullen hinge. So it's not just something dead, though it appears dead. It offers active resistance. See the uh, magic of these words. It's a living portal means it can resist even more. That's the big challenge. You know, if it's a block of wood, you can finally have its way through. But it's something living. And if that becomes a block of wood, it resists because it can increase its resistance as you press against it more and more. Heavily reluctant, it complained inert against the tyranny of the spirit's touch. Don't wake me up. Several places we have in the beginning, first canto, book one, that light comes and it teased in conscience to wake ignorance. So we have words like teased, tempted. It doesn't allow. It says, let me sleep. Don't disturb me. It's comfortable in its cocoon. A formidable voice cried from within, Back, creature of earth, lest tortured and torn thou die. Why this is closed? Mother says your body is a protection. You don't realize it. Says we are surrounded by all kinds of entities and forces and energies. And if we become aware, it is enough to make us mad. As such, life is not simple. So she says, body is a protection. If we get rid of the body, we are thrown into a, um, into literally an unmanageable crowd of all kinds of forces and energies. It's not that there is body and God. Lots that come in between. The vital world, the elemental world and the body is thick and dense precisely to protect us, prevent them from entering. In addition, there is another envelope provided by the divine, the subtle physical envelope. But if we are very fatigued, if we have not slept well, if we engage in activities which are very, very, create a lot of excitement, or we are dull and depressed, then this envelope is pierced and the body wall becomes weak and then an illness can penetrate. Otherwise, it remains healthy and intact. So, it is saying, cautioning her, Look, there is a reason why it is closed. Don't open it. Otherwise, you will be tortured and torn and you will die. It's, no, people don't hear this voice, but they experience fear sometimes when they try to push against the wall. And this is the, it literally terrorizes, makes us feel afraid. Go back. Stay where you are. Don't try all this. A dreadful murmur rose like a dim sea. The serpent of the threshold hissing rose. A fatal guardian hood with monstrous coils. The serpent of the threshold is, of course, we have the Jewish myth and the Kabbalah tradition where you have the serpent which guards the threshold where the outer world enters into the inner. And he is a shadow of the golden serpent who is above. So, the way they prescribe is something very interesting. The way is faith and love. So, in that tradition it is told that if you have love and faith, you will eventually get past the serpent. Otherwise, it doesn't yield. It's a fatal guardian. 
and that is what we see also in our uh, myth of shiva with the snake so you know before you go to shiva you have the snake he is jetted out projecting out <laughs> you can't go near beyond a point from a distance he is very nice imagine you go near and the snake he says so that is what happens to all of us when we come near to god we have to first meet this guardian serpent who will not let us in easily so what is to be done savitri will show us the way let us see not only that the hounds of darkness growled with jaws agape so just as there are hounds of light sarma intuition there are hounds of darkness they inform the darkness that here is somebody trying to enter and conquer this realm so he says okay all kinds of terror tactics start to prevent it from entering and trolls and gnomes and goblins scowled and stared they are all dwarf like creatures trolls and gnomes ugly creatures dwellers of the cave uh, all these uh, which uh, which control some function or the other of earth uh, some material nature they control some function or the other so they are all there and they begin to uh, stare and wild beast roaring thrill the blood with fear and minas muttered in a dangerous tongue so either when we begin the path of yoga sometime people start seeing lot of snakes it's a very common experience all kinds of fearful snakes rise up and start doing all kinds of things or strange creatures or sometimes we don't see them but suggestions suggestions of fear experiences of fear and they start knocking at the gates to prevent us from entering the door of yoga there are people i know who started feeling fear looking at mother's picture and they turn they would turn the picture because they feel afraid actually it's not that is the grace but the suggestion comes that no 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 the fear is coming from there so they turn it not realizing that they are acting under the influence of these powers which want to create distance between us and the divine so that's why yoga is only when we are called for the yoga there has to be readiness and a preparation if we are afraid of life afraid of problems of life then yoga is a far cry far more dangerous things unshaken her will pressed on the rigid wards so this what the mother recommends in fact she has given precisely this image in one of her writings conversations she says imagine as if you are sitting before a bronze door and you are pressing against it and pressing against it and the door is not opening so what do you do press harder and harder the door is not opening press harder and harder so how does it happen practice 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 and one day all these efforts accumulate and suddenly the door opens and why so late people often say why does divine take so long it should be just be knock and he opens because we will enter into a, a swarm and crowd which will eat us up so the more we wait the more we delay the more we become one pointed that is why the experiences don't come like that and if they come like that then it means one of the two things one rare possibility that we have been prepared in previous life that's good or else that they are imitative experiences it takes long we have to knock because we become ready it's like you know there is a very good food which has been prepared by mama and we are not hungry so we don't value it we even say what mama what have you prepared but when you are hungry then it's a different story altogether you know my experience in again flying to russia with my vegetarian background so they had a vegetarian food but my habit of fondness for indian food and there was pasta and i said sir i take vegetarian but this is vegetarian <laughs> so pasta with white sauce so i said i have to do this now <laughs> equanimity <laughs> equanimity mother equanimity so i offered and had i knew i won't go beyond few morsels so each morsel i was relishing calling the mother that may all your energy fall into this few morsels 
<laughs> of course it works <laughs> what to do so when you're hungry you don't mind i mean pasta is very nice and white sauce is very good so nobody should feel offended i am talking about my experience <laughs> so you know it's when you are hungry whatever you get you relish it you are ready for it you leap at it when you are hungry even if something comes to stop you on the way and you have seen there is the food you rush towards it when you love someone if it comes very easily you don't value it so that's why people sometimes delay they want to delay because then you know it uh, you know we just saw olympic some man swimmer proposed to another swimmer so it's a very interesting story he proposed it soon after she won the silver medal now the beauty is they've been dating for last 5 years neither he has proposed nor she has agreed so 5 years poor man was trying but that day she agreed and she was asked why did you agree she doesn't say so many years she says something very interesting she says that day that moment i felt like saying yes i just felt he's genuine so the moment can be as simple as that the revelation of the divine is really like that suddenly you are face to face with the beloved but a long preparation because otherwise if it happens to us too early then we will be completely lost it our very system can get shattered and hence we read that pressing and pressing so she presses presses unshaken her will pressed on the rigid bars the gate swung wide with a protesting jar the opponent powers withdrew their dreadful guard her being entered into the inner worlds but this is only the easier part <laughs> she enters now what happens when she enters it's not that she is face to face with her soul in a narrow passage the subconscious gate our body mind the very everything in the body largely is under the influence of the subconscious built from that it comes up from that so the moment we open the gate we enter into the suddenly we confront this huge subconscious consciousness energy which is supporting the formation of the body so she experiences that she breathed with difficulty and pain and strove to find the inner self concealed in sense this is a marvelously occult line in the very senses the self flows but it's hidden it has got trapped and entangled into it so she must extract it step by step into a dense of subtle matter packed a cavity filled with a blind mass of power and opposition of misleading gleams a heavy barrier of unseen sight she forced her way through body to the soul she can't see she has to push herself unseen sight just like you enter into a obscurity where you have to just feel grope where is it am i going in the right direction and then she is besieged across a perilous border line she passed this is what is the safety bar beyond which we are safe in our little prison house of matter but the moment we cross that perilous line which happens when people foolishly and ignorantly commit suicide then they are thrown suddenly out of the body and they are cross that perilous line in the subconscious realm with nothing to protect them neither the body nor the light because they have died in a state of utter disgust and pain and suffering and sadness so they cross into that realm and this is described here perilous border where life dips into the subconscious dusk or struggles from matter into chaos of mind a swarm with elemental entities this region is full of the elemental energies which uh, can be seen in two ways elemental energies are the energies of matter the five elements that's how it comes but they are actually small little beings what are called in india as bhutas and pishachas so these are the elemental en entities which are there around the corner so because of the body they can't do anything but the moment we are out of the body then they start attacking 
so when mother was asked once which is better burning the body or putting in a coffin is a very little to choose from the two <laughs> but then she says there is a reason why they do it in india and she says because in india there is a very profound developed occult knowledge though of course she cautions that if you burn prematurely there is a problem because this the disconnection has not taken place and it may be very painful to suddenly be thrown out and burnt and then she says people are very insensitive to the dead they want to rush to the cremation ground it's not good you should allow at least 24 hours law is the problem she has even said sometimes 7 days but law doesn't allow i think in norway will they keep for some time which is very good but the in india why do they burn she says because they were aware of the elemental entities which swarm around the dead body so as soon as the soul comes out in the vital sheath they rush at it and so by actually lighting a physical fire you can destroy many of these elemental entities is something very interesting the interface between matter and the subtle world and we are discovering it and now we may have actually you know weapons like that is very now the latest weapon uh, is those electromagnetic radiations i believe seriously i believe from very reliable sources even india has it and maybe we'll know it after they will not reveal it now but these are weapons where there is no bomb there is no explosion there is no light <laughs> they are satellite directed waves and one pulsation is enough to wipe a city clean you don't know there was a city it's gone this is the latest in weapon technology just radiation of electromagnetic energy and this cleaned one moment so what kind of uh, things but this of course a misuse but there is a way you can destroy many of these elemental energies by simply by fire and perhaps this was the reason why fire has been even outer fire probably serves this purpose it's a kind of protection so savitri experiences this elemental entities and fluttering shapes of vague half bodied thought and crude beginnings of incontinent force so that's why these bhutas these elemental energies are described always in you know in old indian hindi movies they were always like there is a heroine who has become ghost and she is all the time singing one line of one song <laughs> half thought it has got stuck like a record it must be very boring and painful life actually they are worth pitying not to be afraid they can do nothing else or if they have died in a state of fear with that half feeling that fear 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 or crying so it's like half something which these elemental energies pick up and they embody that so they are not things to be afraid of actually ghosts are to be pitied should feel sorry and if they come our way we should say please you know i pray for you you are not at peace be at peace they will be very happy nobody you know everybody gets afraid of them so they can't even cry out their heart listen to them at least you know we can be a good counselor if a ghost is crying let him cry so if he cries out at least the fellow will be at rest we would have done a good deed so crude beginnings of incontinent force all the time things are flowing out at first a difficult narrowness was there a press of uncertain powers and drifting wills for all was there but nothing in its place everything was in a state of confusion and chaos that's the symbol of this um, and the experience of the subconscious world and we'll see it in dreams when we see nothing is in its place all confusion and chaos at times an opening came a door was forced she crossed through spaces of a secret self and trod in passages of inner time at last she broke into a form of things a start of finiteness a world of sense the first beginnings of form the borders of the form and the formless this is what the scientists have discovered in the quantum world it's a state where everything is in a state of confusion and 
the form has not yet started. It's the first beginnings of form. So it's that's the place where Savitri enters. But all was still confused. Nothing self found. Soul was not there, but only cries of life. Little jets of impulses, drifting wills, half-bodied thoughts, incontinent force. This is the experience in this world. And we see Sri describing this world at great length when he speaks about the descent into night. But here she is describing these worlds as they are experienced and reflected within us as we try to go within. A thronged and clamorous air environed her. A horde of sounds defied significance. We see this happening when we sit for meditation. In the beginnings when people try. So, when we are in an awake state, supposing we follow a certain prayer, maybe a long prayer, we know it very well. Now when we begin to go within, sometimes you see half this thing, the links get broken. And suddenly you remember, okay, it's, oh, I have not, where was I? And so on, You we go inside. Then there are thoughts which come, thoughts which are meaningless, absurd. There is no sequence, no pattern to it. Mechanically they are coming. And one is struggling with it. So one should not struggle. The point is to keep pressing towards that. This is the secret that Savitri gives us. If we start struggling, there will be no end to it. The more we sound, the more they will have more and more come up. So, a horde of sounds defied significance. A dissonant clash of cries and contrary calls. A mob of visions broke across the sight. A jostled sequence lacking sense and suit. All kinds of thoughts and feelings, even things which you don't want to experience, which you have long lost, forgotten, they will come up because they are kept like treasures in the subconscious part and they begin to come up. This is a common experience when people start initially to go within. And many will, after that, give up and say, well, meditation is not for me. But it's the first sign that we are really progressing. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, now at least something is happening rather than nothing happening. <laughs> you should take it like this. So one has to go further and deeper. Feelings pushed through a packed and burdened heart. Each forced its separate inconsequent way but cared for nothing but its ego's drive. A rally without key of common will like a marketplace or perhaps actually a rally you know rallies we think they are with an agenda everybody is sitting with a janda and slogan but that's not what they are sitting for somebody is sitting because of thousand rupees somebody is sitting because of the bottle of rum somebody is sitting because of the closeness to a minister somebody is sitting simply because his friend is sitting we just that is a facade so rallies are like that. So without a common will. So one experiences that. The word rally has been used in such a sense by Shurabindo. So one should avoid these rallies. Most rallies are like that. Paid people. Thought stared at thought and pulled at the taut bra brain. As if to pluck the reason from its seat and cast its corpse into life's wayside drain. And it does happen that if one is not protected, if one is not open to grace, if one is trying to do with one's own effort rather than relying on the grace, then instead of arriving at the supra-rational, one can fall into the infra-rational. Slain corpse falling into the drain and confuse the two. There are so many people who suddenly within few days of going inside, start experiencing visions of all kinds of gods. Well, one day I remember in Delhi, we used to read Live Divine and some of the group of us, five days a week and Sunday mornings. So there used to be some other sessions of some kind of healing practices. Again, let me not put the adjective to it. So they would practice something and then come out and they would share this experience and there was a very small fee those days, 2,000 rupees for two days course, 10,000 for 10 days. Reasonable enough for rich people to unburden themselves. 
and feel that you have learned something so one day we were hearing some new entrant who had just within two days started seeing orange light and he was telling to the other person you know what this is wonderful i have started seeing orange light and he says you know what this is the supramental light so <laughs> we were wondering we are fools reading life divine and savitri for so long sitting near <laughs> the relics of shirobindo and the mother here are people in 2 days and 2000 rupees experiencing the supramental light it's like that that realm and it it blinds us no sense of reason works after that you try to say that these are suggestions these are false visions no 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 if false vision i know all that you may be having it my visions are true you try to give a reality check and objectively no 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 there will always be a reason but a false reason so they pluck away the reason and put it that's the first thing the devil does that's why one cannot discard reason until one has reached a point shubindu cautions us that if you do it prematurely it is dangerous if, because then all kinds of forces will come so it will go in fact it will not you, we don't have to discard it it will automatically change into a truth light simply because we have opened it instead of letting it remain you know uh, a barrier on the way we open our reason by trying to understand the divine logic in creation the divine purpose in creation so the reason opens to the light and changes into what is called as a divine reason or intuition where you understand reason but in another way so this is to be done but first he experiences this so might forgotten lie in nature's mud abandoned the slain sentinel of the soul this is the sentinel of the soul reason so it might just you know it is a sentinel it prevents us from <laughs> venturing into dangerous territories it serves a purpose but also it then keeps us tied to matter so it it's a helper and it's a bar so could life's power shake from it mind's rule nature renounces the spirit's government and the bare elemental energies make of the sense a glory of boundless joy a splendor of ecstatic anarchy a revel mighty and mad of utter bliss revel riot anarchy look at the words madness ecstasy bliss oh i know what is bliss but basically one has moved far away from bliss it's nothing but an intense vital joy and the strange part is i mean in my practice i see many times and people who have experienced it and come back experienced it and come back experienced and come back and you tell them next time see look remember that's not soul it's purely vital and they say yes yes we know it but when it overtakes all is forgotten and when the person is again in that state you try to make them remember you know this had happened this is not the soul joy please understand this is a madness which is coming as a vital uh, power vital energy the soul joy always brings peace quietude not this kind of a madness the person will say you don't know anything you just only talk about mother and shirobindo i am experiencing the real thing so i say okay i don't know once somebody gifted me a tape said put it on your mouth <laughs> i said thank you so much i desperately needed one actually i needed tape that day <laughs> so <laughs> for some work i said thank you so much i'll put it in the right place but it's sad because after a while eventually they come back because you know or they are put back because somebody or the other either <laughs> lock catches up or something so this these kind of experiences this kind of bliss i am on top of the world i am experiencing bliss it doesn't come like that mother has said to experience bliss you have to be a super parsifal the word she has used she says bliss that divine bliss doesn't come like that you can get a touch of it in the psychic state but that is full of quietude and peace but ananda she says you have to be a super parsifal so she explained what is a super parsifal not a trace of desire and not a single tying to pleasure as long as we enjoy even little bit of pleasure there can be no question of ananda so we can know for sure that <laughs> it's not ananda 
it's good to have a joy of life but we should know the difference between the true and the false otherwise we can be misled so here savitri experiences a revel mighty and mad of utter bliss this was the senses instinct void of soul there is no soul here just the senses having a gala time they are no more under the control of the discriminating mind so the horses are running blindly and wildly and you say ah wonderful speed because that speed is very thrilling not realizing it is going to take us to the abyss or when the soul sleeps hidden void of power but now the vital godhead wakes within and lifts the life with the supernal touch so when all this is removed there is a mad din now the vital godhead wakes up and says ah i have my chance why because reason has been cast aside and therefore shobindo cautions us but how shall come the glory and the flame if mind is cast away into the abyss this is the danger so when we say god is divine is beyond mind it's so true but if you try to do it by the zen way it's dangerous it can be yes one person will experience the truth it's true but 99 will just fall into an infra rational state and mistake it for the truth so that's why shobindo says two things saved me in my journey of yoga one that i believed that nothing is impossible everything is possible and second that i doubted everything <laughs> the paradox we are ready to believe our own experience so readily this is a story of somebody who had a vision you know he wanted to give lectures on the life divine and he sent a message to mother telegram that bless i need your blessings for giving talk on the life divine and no reply came suddenly he had a vision of krishna all in silver telling him of course you can start the lecturing it was a krishna of his own formation <laughs> and then he sent another telegram mother i have got the adesh and i am starting so telegram came stop you don't have the divine sanction for this you know what the person says no 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 krishna is higher krishna has told me and i don't need any more sanction the mind plays a trick it's very convenient krishna <laughs> so all this kind of thing that's why it's humility protection of the guru surrender to grace why they are so important particularly humility otherwise as such our head remains swollen it becomes swollen like ravana with 10 heads one head is bad enough to manage so so if mind is cast away into the abyss so we are not to cast it away into the abyss but ennoble it enlarge it open it more and more to the light for body without mind has not the light the rapture of spirit sense the joy of life all then becomes subconscious tenebrous in conscience puts its seal on nature's page or else a mad disorder whirls the brain so this we know is the sad story when people take to yoga particularly under ambition of becoming a great yogi so it uh, or a guru so what happens is this ambition pushes them and uh, while they may say you know god divine surrender all these are words divine knows inside and when they open into this domain Uh, because they want to be a guru and a great yogi sometimes even more dangerous avatar so they see a nice comfortable vision you are the avatar next avatar in the line and after that it's all madness 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 mad disorder was the brain so this and i i, I am real stories i see i mean it's it's sad also someone staying for 40 years and he would not speak not speak to anyone and when lot of psychiatric symptoms so uh, the person was told at least go and speak to him he at least is open to mother and shobindo so the person gave a very interesting reason he said no i won't speak to him because he regards shobindo and the mother as supreme 
so then <laughs> why won't you speak to him because i am the supreme that was the delusion i am the supreme in a abject state but i am the supreme so eventually of course he came and sure enough uh, logic doesn't work so it, it can happen so that's why uh, reliance on the guru and people can get into uh, we'll see it what happens when one enters the life realm this is still only the beginning the promo of the movie which is yet to come <laughs> only little advertisement posting along a ravaged nature's roads a chaos of disordered impulses in which no light can come no joy no peace this is one of the signs no peace just a restless urge disordered impulses all kinds of impulses may overtake a person this state now threatened this she pushed from her they come I mean, there are people who have ended up believing they are krishna and therefore they have many gopis these are facts and justified nothing but their lust these are facts of spiritual life and always always there are you know foolish undiscriminating disciples who take it very easy this krishna is easily available because that krishna is very exacting he has given a difficult path get rid of desires practice equanimity that's a difficult krishna this is a easy krishna there are people who have begun to believe i am savitri and he is satyavan it's not a single story i am telling which is not based on facts of real stories i am draupadi he is krishna one has to be so careful so these are the kinds of things which may happen so what savitri does just pushes them aside don't get know that these are all <laughs> push them aside but ego can be very dangerous at this point that's why the resolve for yoga and the call for yoga it's not something meant for everyone one has to be ready for this as if in a long endless tossing street one driven mid a trampling hurrying crowd hour after hour she trod without release holding by her will the senseless mute at bay originally a french word mute it's like a pack of wolves or hounds i mean but originally it's a french word she when they uses some of these words so beautifully in poetry suddenly interposes it so it's they will come all kinds of suggestions you have to just ignore them don't get caught don't fight just ignore it holding at bay not to concern oneself become indifferent because the goal is not this the goal is not to become another krishna another shurabindu another mother goal is to give oneself completely to them that's the goal and as long as we remember ourselves we are far still that is the simple yardstick one has to completely give there is nothing and if one remembers i have given myself therefore become one then obviously it is the ego playing a trick because it can play many tricks out of the dreadful press she dragged her will and then another safety and fixed her thought upon the savior name ma 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 shurbindo ma shurbindo mother shurbindo mother shurbindo mother shurbindo mother shurbindo nothing else uh, these experiences these visions voices these suggestions these fears these all kinds of things ma ma save your name so she gives us three hints now pressing towards the goal not to forget that she presses and presses against the gate second pushing them aside third keeping the reason intact the discriminating intellect we should know we should be able to detect the thief and fourth most important remembering the savior name only were safe who kept god in their hearts a prayer upon their lips and the great name in the dark regions descent into night this is the secret given to ashupati only were safe who kept god in their hearts a prayer upon their lips and the great name for winding through hell turns the heavenward path all have to go through it 
So, so much we have to hold on or allow the divine to hold on to us. And this is the real yoga. Not that yoga, okay, sit for a while, close your eyes, one minute we'll meditate. <laughs> one minute or half an hour. Ah, uh, you feel very nice? Yes. Did you feel a cooling sensation over the head? Yes. Oh, your kundalini has awakened. Now, where is my fees? That's the kundalini awakening. This is not that stuff. So if we are looking for that kind of cheap stuff or expensive stuff, in Sherbindo's literature, we should be stay away. It's not for that. It's real thing. Real yoga in real time. And we see these hints in the Vedic yoga. How the Rishi, uh, you know, he's besieged by powers of darkness. He says, praise to the sun because for, for days after days, there is only night and night and night. He feels exiled from the light. All these prayers are there. Even the gods come to test him. The real yoga. Not, you know what, modern yoga like McDonald's. <laughs> Again, it may be a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> then what happens? Then all grew still and empty. She was free. After a while, this passes away. But as it is said, O oh soul, it is too early to rejoice. This is the first level of the difficulty. The first country. This is the easier one. Now will come something more subtle, even more deceptive. A large deliverance came, a vast, calm space, a while she moved through a blank tranquility. Of naked light from an invisible sun, a void that was a bodiless happiness, a blissful vacuum of nameless peace. First difficulty negotiated, we climb upon a peak, we feel happy, we feel the touch of the sun, there is daylight, there is peace. But then we have to cross another mountain and to cross another mountain we have to come down again. But now a mightier danger but now a mightier danger's front drew near. It's mightier. This was nothing. The press of bodily mind, the inconscient brood of aimless thought and will had fallen from her. Approaching loomed a giant head of life, ungoverned by mind or soul, subconscient, vast. These are the vital planes and Shurabindu cautions in the synthesis even those who become instruments of the divine can lose track and become instrument of the titan. These, there are dhatyas on these vital planes who can easily occupy because they are looking for consciousness which is now a little different from the ordinary. So as long as one is a little mortal it's okay, they are not much interested. But somebody who has gone past the first barrier, they say, ah, this is my target. Here is my chance. So there are not just little gods and big gods, but also datyas. And either of them we have to avoid. We are not here to become instrument of gods. I mean, I was recent, recently reading somebody's life diary. It's so, dang so dangerous that he started experiencing that he has become instrument of a god when he was already given a beautiful name by the mother. It's a letdown, not realizing. And it can be so tricky. So, so see, goes into that. It tossed, ungoverned by mind or soul, subconscious, vast. It tossed all power into a single drive. You feel they are intense, extreme energy. Literally that you are omnipotent, except that you can't, you know, protect even your leg from getting hurt. But gives that feeling of too much power and energy. All power into a single drive. It made its power a might of dangerous seas. Into the stillness of her silent self, into the whiteness of its muse of space, a spate, a torrent of the speed of life, 
broke like a wind-lashed driven mob of waves. Racing on a pale floor of summer sand, it drowned its banks, a mountain of climbing waves. So just as when we are entering into the inner country, crossing the threshold of the matter, the experience one has mostly of these serpents and these kind of beings. Similarly, when one crosses into this threshold, one experiences the giant waves sometimes, like much huge than tsunami. Tsunami is dwarfed, lashing and coming. And of course, if one is protected, one will actually experience the protection either inside a house or an invisible protection. So they will come and touch and go away. And see how beautifully both these things are there in the story of little Krishna. Of course, there are so many ways of looking at the story. The prison house, but it's the story of the psychic being. That's what the mother says. And how the psychic being is protected. There is a threshold serpent and there are waves that are coming. But nothing can harm because he is a chosen child. The psychic being in us is the great protection. That's why the first thing is to discover it. And if yoga is done for any other purpose, it's dangerous. And we'll stop here with these last few lines. A spate, a torrent of its, a spate, a torrent of the speed of life, broke like a wind-lashed, driven mob of waves, racing on a pale floor of summer sand. It drowned its banks, a mountain of climbing waves. So we'll stop here. And continue tomorrow.